I have this table tennis ball with me. Now, if I drop this ball on the table, something very interesting happens. Look carefully. I am going to release the ball from 30 cm, 20 cm and 10 cm. In the first case, the ball bounced back to roughly 24 cm. In the second and third cases, it bounced back to roughly 16 cm and 8 cm respectively. You see the pattern, right? The ratio of the height of the bounce and the height of the release point is 24 by 30 is equal to 16 divided by 20 is equal to 8 by 10 which is 0.8. Isn't it amazing that this ball somehow manages to jump with the same ratio at any height? However, when we look at multiple bounces, it becomes even more interesting. Look carefully. When I release the ball from this height, its velocity is zero, right? When does its velocity become zero again? It is the moment when the ball bounces back and again reaches to its maximum height, this point. So I can assume that the downward motion of the ball from this point is similar to releasing the ball from 24 cm. So how much will the ball bounce back this time? We already know the answer from the previous data. It will bounce back about 0.8 times of the height. Which means that in the second bounce, it will reach to a height h2 is equal to 0.8 times 24 centimeter. What about the third bounce? It has to be 0.8 times 0.8 times 24 centimeter and so on. So we can write down the height of each bounce as a sequence. 30 which is the release point 0.8 times 30 0.8 square times 30 0.8 cube times 30 and so on. This sequence here is called a geometric progression. Mathematicians have known about geometric progression for more than two millennia. For a general case, we can substitute 30 with the symbol A and 0.8 with the symbol R. We have the sequence as A, AR, AR square, AR cube and so on. As you can see, the first term of the sequence is A r to the power 0, second one a r to the power 1, third one is a r square and so on. So the nth element must be a r to the power n minus 1. Therefore a n plus 1 divided by a n is equal to a r to the power n divided by a r to the power n minus 1 equal to r which implies a n plus 1 is equal to r a n. This simple recurrence relation may come handy in many problems. For example, we can say that height of next bounce is equal to ratio of two consecutive bounces times height of the current bounce. Now, when we add all the elements of a geometric progression, it is called a geometric series or GP series. 
which is equal to a plus a r plus a r square plus a r cube and all other terms. Now the question is can we figure out the value of this sum? Let's see. Let's assume that the sum of n term is s. So s equal to a1 plus a2 plus up to a n which implies that s is equal to a plus a r plus a r square plus up to the last term a r to the power n minus 1. Now if I multiply both sides with r we get r s is equal to a r plus a r square plus a r cube plus up to the last term a r to the power n. So if we write s minus r s then a r a r a r square a r square up to a r to the power a minus 1 gets cancelled. Only a minus a r to the power n remains. So we can write s times 1 minus r is a times 1 minus r to the power n. So s is equal to a times 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r when r is not 1 otherwise s will be 1 by 0 form when n goes towards infinity this becomes an infinite gp series a gp series with infinite number of terms for n tends to infinity and mod r greater than 1 r to the power n either goes to plus infinity or minus infinity so the series diverges however if mod r less than 1 then r to the power infinity goes to 0 and the series has a finite value it converges In that case, the value of the sum s infinity is a 1 minus 0 divided by 1 minus r, which is a divided by 1 minus r. Now let's try to apply this knowledge in case of bouncing balls. Let's try to guess how many bounces there will be before this ball comes to a stop. In the ideal scenario, the number should be infinite. But there are so many factors involved here, like air drag, damping and other forces. So it is reasonable to think that the ball would stop bouncing when the maximum height of the bounce becomes Hn is equal to 0.1 millimeter, which is 100 micrometer, which is again equal to 0.01 centimeter so how many bounds will happen if i drop it from 30 centimeter on the nth bounce height will be 30 times 0.8 to the power n so 30 times 0.8 to the power n is equal to 0.01 implies n is equal to log to the base 0.8 of 0.01 divided by 30. Value of this logarithm turns out to be 35.88. So there will be roughly 36 bounces if the ball stops bouncing at 100 micrometer range. Now I will drop the ball once again and let's keep counting how many bounces there are.
you see it touched the number 50 the ball still keeps bouncing below 100 micrometer range in fact if we calculate h50 is equal to 30 times 0 0.8 to the power 50 centimeter which is 4.28 times 10 to the power minus 4 centimeter which is 4.28 micrometer so the height of the last bounce was less than 5 micron which is at least 3 times thinner than our hair and of the same order of thickness as spider web threads or bacteria. You see how a simple mathematical model made the problems of bouncing balls easy. That's the beauty of mathematics. To summarize this video, GP series is A plus AR plus AR square plus other terms. Nth term of a GP series is A r to the power n minus 1. Sum of GP series of n terms is S is equal to A 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. At infinity, series converges only for mod r less than 1. And in that case, the value is S infinity is equal to a by 1 minus r and tt balls keep bouncing up to 5 micron range. In the upcoming videos, we will discuss geometric progression and bounces in more detail. Math is fun. See you in the next video.